everybody, it's Amber, and I am finally back with another craft fair video for you. I'm sorry that I have been gone for several days. I've been under the weather and just a couple, you know, life gets a little crazy sometimes, but I'm back and this is probably one of my most favorite projects that I've ever done for a craft fair and I cannot wait to share it with you. So um, I discussed in the beginning of my craft fair series that I was going to have this year some higher dollar items. I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to try to, you know, make them good sellers at my craft fair. And I've been wanting to make these for years. I have had the materials for these for years and I just never had the chance to sit down and actually make them. So I finally had that chance and I'm so excited to share them with you. So what these are and what I'm calling them are little golden book junk journals. And for the sake of my craft fair, I might just call them little golden book journals. Um, so, but really they are a junk journal and I'm super excited. This is what they look like. And they're just adorable. They're altered little golden books. Let me show you. So you guys know what these look like. These are the little golden books. And I have been collecting Christmas, like vintage Christmas ones for years. Anytime my sisters come across one, my mom, even people at my work know that I collect the vintage little golden books and even non-Christmas ones. I have a whole stack. So I got 13 done and I think that's a pretty good start. And I'm going to do, you know, a 14th that we're going to do here on camera. So I think that's a pretty good start to, you know, stock for my craft fair and we'll see how these do. And then if they do really good, maybe I will concentrate on doing a lot more next year. The Altered Little Golden Book is definitely not my original idea. So many, so many people make gorgeous Altered Little Golden Books. It's all over Pinterest. It's all in the street fairs and things like that that I've gone to. And um, one of my biggest, of course, I've mentioned her channel before, is Rebecca Hoot. She even did Altered Little Golden Books um, in, in kits last year, and I did order one from her, and it's so cute. So even if you don't want to tear up a book because it's so special, these books, um, these altered journals have every single page still in here from the book. They're just, you know, sorted throughout this journal. Okay, so I promise the tutorial is going to start soon, and I'm sorry this is a little bit of a chatty video. If you're here just for the tutorial and you don't want to hear me talk, um, just fast forward. <laughs> so with these journals, I know a lot of people are intimidated to make these for craft bears. So I have some tips for you for making these and being able to, to make these in an assembly line and get quite a few done for your craft fair. If you're not doing a craft fair, this is an amazing gift that you can make for somebody for Christmas and they will treasure it forever because it's so, so special. So you're, whether you're making these for your craft fair or gifts, I think that you should definitely follow along with this tutorial. I'm going to give you the simple formula on how to make one of these so you're not overwhelmed, you're not, you know, grabbing from all these different areas in your craft room, you can get organized, you can have the simple formula and then kind of give it your own twist. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to show you all the ones that I made. I have not finished, I have two things to finish on these. This one I have already done the rings, as you can see I put a bunch of fibers and ribbon on the rings. I don't want to fill them completely up because then you won't be able to open the book. I just put a few cute little ribbons on each ring and I think that gives it the perfect touch. I need to finish the ribbons for all of these. And the last thing I'm going to be doing is this. So there is a bunch of ephemera here that I have pulled. This is all Christmas, like this is all Christmas ephemera that I have pulled and I cut up, if you can, as you can see here, I've cut a bunch of journal cards and I have a bunch of ephemera from different collections here and there. And I'm gonna fill every single one of these with tons of ephemera. I'm gonna clip it in. But I do have all the basic construction done on all 13 books and I'm gonna flip through this one for you and then I'm gonna show you the simple formula on how to put one of these together. So like I mentioned, as you open it up, you do have the entire story in here, but 
they're just shuffled throughout the journal. So I left everything alone on these things. If there's writing or scribbles or anything, I just left it because these are vintage, antique, and I want the character to remain with the journal. So like over here, somebody wrote the name. So this is the Santa Surprise. And so then I just took things from my stash. And look at, look at this illustration. This is part of the book. This is just so beautiful. I mean, this is just a genius idea for whoever first had this idea. Thank you. And <laughs> so just look at this illustration. I mean, how beautiful is this? There's no way I wanted to cover this or rip it up or make it into an envelope or anything because it's just so gorgeous. A 1960s illustration. I just love it. So then you just take pages from your stash and I, like I said, showing you so you don't need to worry about it right now. So you can just sit back and enjoy the flip through. So here's a little paper bag I used. This is some scrapbook paper. And it's great because the back side is white so people can do a lot of journaling back here and then, you know, maybe glue some pictures here. Here's more of the book pages. Gorgeous illustrations. And then I also included some journaling paper, which is just um, copy paper. I made some pockets. So this is a pocket here, and then this is a pocket on the top up here. This is just made out of scrapbook paper. The back has a pocket as well. I made a cute, I just put in a cute little red envelope. More journaling paper. And then this is like a shorter um, piece of solid scrapbook paper. I love making different size papers to put in here. More of the illustrations of the book. Look at how gorgeous this is. Oh my goodness. And then this is a piece of scrapbook paper as well. It's a thicker piece of white scrapbook paper. Here's more vintage inspired scrapbook paper. And that's what I tried to pull from my stash. I tried to pull vintage inspired paper, which I have a lot of because that's kind of my favorite theme. You should go in your stash and use what you have. And look at this picture. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Part of the story, and then this one. I just absolutely love this. Here's more journaling paper. Here is um, more scrapbook paper with spots for journaling and pictures. More journaling paper. Here's a short little cute plaid piece I put in. And a piece of solid red cardstock. More of the story. And with the story, if anybody wants to, you know, journal up here with a marker or glue a little picture up here, that's fine. This is a junk journal. They can do whatever they want with it. So adorable. Scrapbook paper. This is one of my favorite illustrations in the book. I absolutely love it. Santa's doing some craft in here. And this one too. I just absolutely love this book more journaling paper. Here's another one of those pockets. I put three of these in each book. So these are so easy to make with a piece of 12 by 12 and I'll show you that in the tutorial. And then up here and on the back more journal paper. Um, a, like a dark red piece of solid cardstock. Beautiful illustrated page. Look at this. I mean how much more vibrant and beautiful can you get? some scrapbook paper, another paper bag, so they can tuck some memories in there. This is just full of gorgeous drawings and pictures and illustrations. Got some more journal paper, another little cute half um, piece of plaid scrapbook paper, and then this is solid red, solid green cardstock. I put one of these little flippies in there. This is just a card set I had. And so I just glued the sides down and made a little notch right here so it becomes a tuck spot or, you know, journal cards or whatever. I just stuck that in there. More journal paper, more of the gorgeous pages from the book. I mean, this is just like a full illustrated page with no words. It's just so pretty. This is another piece of scrapbook paper, and it's really cute because it says Christmas card list. I love that. That's the back and another book page. More of the journaling paper, and there's two here. More of the book, scrapbook paper. More of the gorgeous book. Look at that one, isn't that cute? 
And then here's the last pocket. I might glue this little part down, but you can still, it's still a pocket. And then up here is a pocket as well, as I mentioned. And I did cut a little notch right here, just so you can see the inside of the other side of the paper. Another little pocket. And then the last sheet is a solid white piece of cardstock for more journaling. And here is the back. So that is a complete flip through. Now remember, throughout this entire book, I'm going to be clipping tons of ephemera and little journaling cards and all kinds of fun bits and pieces. So I'll be sure to show you that at the end of the video. But let me show you all the rest of them I made. I'm just going to show you the covers so you can kind of see the vintage little golden books that I used. is the simple formula to one of these adorable little golden book junk journals so don't get overwhelmed by what you see you probably have most of this in your stash so let me show you what you're gonna need okay so you're of course going to need a little golden book so the height of these I have found to be a little frustrating because it's gonna end up being six by seven and fifteen sixteenths so you need to make sure that when you cut all your paper down, you're cutting it six by one sixteenth short of eight inches. So that is technically 15 sixteenths. So I'm going to show you when we cut these down, the little hash mark on your um, cutting tool that is the sixteenth. So it's very easy once you get going. It's not a big deal, but I just wish it was like a straightforward six by eight. Anyway, so you're going to need a little golden book. I used 10 pieces of just regular printer copy paper. I used six pieces of solid cardstock. And what I did is I cut down eight and a half by 11 page. So I ended up with some scraps. And so I have these full pages and then some shorter pages as you saw in the flip through that I did. So you can use any size. It's fun to do different sizes, but I just used like some Christmas colors and I make sure I cut six pieces of solid cardstock. So then I did seven pieces of scrapbook paper, which is of course pattern cardstock. And I just did some that I kind of thought went with the book, but of course just use what's in your stash. It's a junk journal, so that's fine. Some are double sided, some aren't. So that's seven pieces of scrapbook paper. And then I made three of these pockets. These are made using a 12 by 12 piece of scrapbook paper. So I've made two already for this one. And then we're gonna make one on video so I can show you how to make it. They're super, super easy. And then I pulled just some different things from my stash to make it interesting. So I have two paper bags right here. And I got these both, I got both of these from Hobby Lobby, you know, different years. But whatever Hobby Lobby puts out, this is like the perfect size bag for this project. So I got these. And then um, I didn't show this in the flip through that I did because I didn't put one of these in. But you did see like a little flippy card in that last one when I ran out of those. But I did put a little red envelope in all of them. So you can make some cute envelopes with your envelope punch board or just pull some out of your like your stationary stash. So I had these cute little red ones so I used one of those. I just made sure I put two cute little different size elements in there along with all the other stuff. So I used a little red one and then I have a big stash of these Mary Inglebright Christmas envelopes. For some reason I have more envelopes than cards. <laughs> so I used one of these and that'll be fun to tuck goodies in. And then I had some scraps left over from the scrapbook paper that I cut. So I decided to use these little bookmark size pages in the book. So I cut two different sizes of those. And of course you're going to need some fabric strips or ribbon 
to um, tie to the sides. You can tie as many as you want. I did three on each ring, so as many as you want to do. I just cut some different ribbons, and you're going to need book rings. So I would prefer to use a little bit of a smaller size than this. These are from Dollar Tree, and I love it because you get eight for a dollar. These are the one and a quarter inch ones. These are the smaller ones. They have large ones too. I don't know if they have like a middle size one, but this is the smallest one that I could find. But you can just go on Amazon and get like a one inch ring, which would be a lot better for this because it's not going to be as, there's not going to be as much slack, but these worked out just fine. I found them at Dollar Tree. I will link these below for you. And if I can't find them on Dollar Tree, I will link some similar ones from like Amazon that you can get. So those are the materials you're going to need for the way that I made these. And let's go ahead and get started on this tutorial. <laughs> so the very first thing we need to do is deconstruct this book. So don't be afraid. It'll be okay. Oh my gosh, look at this back page. Oh, so cute. But anyway, so what you do is you take the book and you just hold the pages here. And you see they're, they're stapled in. So it's not that difficult to tear apart. So just hold your pages here and simply tear off the cover. Now you might be left with, you know, some of the spine right here. That's okay. Turn it around. Do the same thing. Just tear off the back cover. Don't rip your pages. Try not to. So you got the back cover and the front cover off and now you got to deal with like this. There's some big heavy duty staples in here so don't cut yourself. Um, but you can just kind of simply tear that off. So easy. So here you go. This is garbage. You can throw this away. You've got your pages and they're all still intact, kind of, because they're like glued here. So that's going to be super easy to slice off. But let's take care of the covers first. You can totally use a regular cutting tool for this. And what I do is I put in a dull blade. So I don't use my nice sharp new blade. I put in a dull blade. And I save my dull blades for things like this, for cutting chipboard and different stuff like that, so I don't ruin the blade that I'm using to cut paper. So all you're going to do is you're going to stick this in your cutting tool at six exactly six inches. So line this up at six inches and just hold it down and slice. Now it's not going to go all the way through, so just take it out. Turn it around, line it exactly up at six inches again. Put it down, and this is going to be an easier slice because look, now it's an exact, nice, clean edge. So you've got the back cover done. You can throw this scrap away. And now just do the front cover. So line it up again at exactly six inches. Do your cut, go through a couple times with that dull blade, then open it up, turn it around, six inches exactly, and that's going to be an easy cut. So now you have beautiful front and back cover all ready to go, exactly the same size, and that was super simple. So just take this, throw it away. And then you're going to keep your dull blade in there because you're going to go through several sheets here. Same thing with your little packet here of pages. Turn it around where that ugly edge is going to be cut off. Line it up at six inches. And do the same thing. Do Be a little more gentle with these because they're pages. But do your slice and kind of go over it several times. Be careful because these some of these will start falling away. And in this case, mine came off without having to do the second cut. So just throw this scrap away, and you have perfectly clean pages. So now you can stick them inside your book, and they're going to be the exact right size. Look at that. Everything is nice and clean and lined up. You got your book all prepped, and what I did is I prepped all my books, got them all cut down, and I stacked all of them up in a line like this and I just got all of them done and cleaned up and then I went and did my paper. Okay. 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is make the pockets. Now, for the video, of course, I've already made two of them, and they're super cute. I love these pockets. So these are the pockets we're going to be making. They have a pocket here, a pocket up here, and this, this is going to be sealed over here because it's going to have the rings, and then one on the back. So these are made using a 12 by 12 piece of scrapbook paper. So the final measurement on this is going to be 12 across by 11 tall. So this one doesn't have an orientation, but just make sure that you cut the one inch to make it 11 off of the height of it. So you're going to need a scoreboard for this, just for um, a couple of score lines. So you're going to put your scrapbook paper in your scoring board at t on the 12 inch side, so it's 12 inches across, and you are going to score in the middle at 6 inches. So just give it a nice score. Then you're going to turn it so the 12 inches is now on the left side, and now you're on the 11 inch side up here. So you're going to score this at 8 inches. So it's going to be a 3 inch score from the bottom. So score at 8 inches. And now you're not going to need your scoreboard anymore. So now you've got your page all scored and you need to decide what you want to be showing the most. So like on this one, this part is showing the most. So I want the holly leaves to show the most, so I'm going to make sure that I keep that up. So just keep that in mind when you're folding. So I'm going to fold it like this give it a nice score, open it back up, and fold this part that we scored up, like this. So give that a nice crease, and then just close it like this. I mean, how easy was that, you guys? That was so easy. Just make sure, because it's a little bulky over here, you give it a nice crease, and down here as well. So this is your pocket. All I did up here for the little notch, is I just took one of my circle punches and kind of eyeballed it. So the left is going to be, so this is going to be how it goes in your book where the opening is at the left because that's where the rings are going to go. So make sure that's where you cut your notch on this side, not this side. So I just kind of go in here on that first layer, eyeball a half circle or like a quarter circle. And there we go. There's our cute little notch. So now we have all three pockets made. Isn't that cute? So before, we're almost finished with this, but before we are completely finished, you need to cut that little sixteenth of an inch off. So I guess we could have waited to do the notch, but it's not a big deal. So you're going to go almost to the eight, and there's a little tiny hash mark right before the eight on these trimmers. And that is the sixteenth mark. So just, it's like seriously a sliver. So we're gonna trim that off. And we got our sliver, oops, sorry, I was out of frame. But we got the little sliver right here trimmed off. So make sure you're cutting your scrapbook paper, your pockets, your journaling paper, and at least three of your solid cardstock pieces down to six, by 7 and 15 sixteenths. So 6 by 1 sixteenth shy of 8. Okay? And the rest of them, just make sure, I mean, you don't have to worry about the, the width at all because they can be any width. They can be different sizes. But the height has to be that 7 and 15 sixteenths measurement because you don't want this, you know, going over and overlapping all the other pages and coming out of the cover, that's not a good look. So just make sure that they're either, um, so make sure all the heights of everything are the same. Like this, it doesn't matter because it's so little, you're only going to poke two holes here. So let me show you how that's all done and then I'm going to give you my last tip. So my first tip was the simple formula to get that all settled and situated and then my last tip is coming up in just a second. Okay everybody, so for the sake of this video, just pretend there's a few here that I've already cut the holes, um, that I've already punched the holes, but just let's pretend none of the holes are punched, okay? Just for the sake of this video. So here's how we're going to assemble this. 
You're going to open this up and the very first page should always be, in my opinion, like I said, all this is my opinion, should always be the first page of the book. So just flip that over. And then I like to put something immediately interactive on the first page. After the first page, I'll put a piece of scrapbook paper right here. But on top of that, I will put, but on top of that, I'll put a paper bag. So once you open it, it's going to be the page, then a cute little paper bag and scrapbook paper. So then turn that, then you keep another book page in there, turn that. Then I like to stick in a page of the white journaling paper, which is just a copy paper. Okay. And then after that, I will put a pocket my first pocket. My first pocket in, we'll, just, we'll try that one. So then flip that over, then keep another book page in there, flip that. Next, I'm going to put a piece of solid cardstock. So I'm going to use a full green one, flip it, and then I will put another piece of journaling paper right behind it. Okay, then flip another page over. So here I'm going to do another piece of scrapbook paper. another piece of journaling paper but between then I'm gonna put the journaling paper but in front of this journaling paper I'm gonna put one of these half sheets so then I'll we'll flip that over keep another book page there then here I'm gonna do another piece of journaling paper then I'm gonna go for Another piece of scrapbook paper. Flip another page over. So here is another pocket. We put a pocket here. A piece of journaling paper. And then I think after that piece of journaling paper, I'm going to do a half piece of, you know, one of those three quarter pieces of the solid cardstock. Flip that, and then we have another book page. So here I'm going to do a piece of scrapbook paper, then another paper bag, and behind that paper bag I'll do another piece of journaling paper. So it's going to end up looking like that, which is super cute. So then flip the page, then do a piece of solid cardstock. This is just, you know, me eyeballing it, you guys. You don't have to do it in this order. So another piece of cardstock. Then I'm going to put in, um, behind that, I'm going to put in some more journaling paper. And this time I'll do a double journaling paper. I like to do that sometimes. But between them, I'm going to do a piece of scrapbook paper. So then let's turn those two over and then turn another book page over. Then I'm going to do um, a piece of, then I'm going to do the last pocket, which is here. More of the journaling paper and a three quarter piece of the solid cardstock. Then the book page. Here I will do a piece of scrapbook paper. And I think I'll do um, my last piece of journaling paper and then this envelope. So turn the book page over. Here I'm going to do a scrapbook paper, the half sheet of solid white cardstock with this cute little half or quarter sheet on top. Flip that over. Then I'm going to flip the page over. That's the last page. And then I'm going to put a solid piece of white cardstock at the end for more journaling. This is going to go in in just a second. So then you have it all assembled. Just stack it up like this. My advice is to stack it all to this edge and to the top. So get it nice and even and look at that. It's even all the way around. Okay? So you might be wondering why I'm not 
punch in the holes first. Well, I'm going to tell you that's my last tip in just a second. Okay, so we've got this even all the way around. I'm not going to include this, and this is why. So I'm going to take this book all assembled. Make sure, again, it's really, really straight and good to go. And I'm going to take some regular size binder clips, and I'm going to take this to the top around the area where, like, those quarter sheets are right there. And then on the right side. Okay, so this is all completely assembled and ready and good to go. So then this is my tip. You know I made 13 of these. Rebecca Hoot gave a little tip on her channel because I was very concerned about hole punching and this taking me like 20 years to get everything hole punched. I didn't know if my hole punch was strong enough to go through the chipboard. Um, so what uh, Rebecca Hoot did is she took hers to like a print shop or like Staples or something and asked them to do the three hole punch. So what I did is I did some research and Staples did say they could do it. Office Depot, I don't but I don't have one of those near me, but they can also do the three hole punch from what I've heard. But what I did is I looked up local print shops in my town. You know, there is family owned print shops probably in every town that have heavy duty um, drills that can go and punch these books. So I called my local print shop and I spoke to the woman and I told her, you know, I've got these books and they're chipboard on either side with approximately 40 pages. And I didn't really know how many pages I was going to have. Um, and she said for 15 books, my total would be $17. Like, are you serious? That is such a great price. Imagine me with my little, we are memory keepers, you know, hole punch, doing each page, having to switch this around to do the bottom hole, clicking it down. I mean, if you have one of these books that you want to make, by all means, do it yourself. I had 13. So all I did is I did this exact thing for all the books. I took them in a bucket, like, you know, all of them lined up. I dropped them off, and I picked them up, and my total was $16 because I had 13. And she, they drilled perfect punched holes, clean as can be, through all of my books. And so to even make it easier on them, I even took them a template. And so all she had to do was clip this on each of the sets of books and drill the holes there. So that way I knew if I forgot anything, I had this at home. So I could use this to include any more stuff in there. Like I'll use it for this envelope. You know, for when I get the books home, I just, that's when I added in my little stuff. And I can just punch those myself. So that is what I did. It was so easy. I was like jumping for joy when I found this out. Thank you, Rebecca, for that tip. I never would have thought of doing that. I didn't know anybody had three-hole punch services. I mean, who would know that, right? <laughs> so this was great. I absolutely, I just want to make a million more of these because I know I have this service. And they were so nice. And I can't believe it was just a, about a dollar a book plus tax. I mean, it was just crazy. So... Um, it just saves so much time, and I know that's an additional cost, but if you think about it, that's $16 for 13 books. I mean, that's crazy. I definitely am willing to spend that money just because I wouldn't have been able to get this done without that service. So that's my tip to you, but this is the assembly of the book. So then you just simply take it home and you put your rings in it. And then you just put the pages in. Like this one, I put the little red envelope in the front instead of the paper bag. You can do whatever you want. I just wanted to kind of take you through it and show you that you can do anything you want. Just intertwine all the book pages in here. And it's just such a fun process. And then clipping in all of that ephemera is going to be so much fun. So let me take the book that I have finished here. Um with the ribbon and I'm going to take some of that ephemera and clip it through here, put it, tuck it in the pockets, do all kinds of fun stuff with it. I hope you enjoy.
little golden book junk journal. I really love how it turned out and I'm excited to fill the rest of them with all the ephemera. And so let's go ahead and do a final flip through. Okay, everybody, so that is the final flip through of this little golden book junk journal. I hope that you try this out. Even if you're not doing a craft fair, you can make some of these for gifts for Christmas. They just make the most beautiful gifts. You can even fill them with pictures and memorabilia for yourself or your kids or any family members or friends. Like I said, if you're making them for the craft fair, get them all assembled. Um, load them up in a bucket and try to take them to a print shop or a, your local staples or office depot and try to get them three hole punched and just add the rings yourself. So for packaging I'm not going to be putting these in any type of packaging to start off they're just going to be very organically kind of um, set up at my craft fair. I'll probably have them in a big long bin so people can flip through them you know like this can just look through them and flip through them and decide which one they want. Okay, for pricing, this is going to be one of my higher dollar items, and I'm going to price these at $15 each for my craft fair. So I've had most of this stuff in my stash. It just cost me, you know, the $16 to get them punched. So if I sell one, I'm pretty much broken even on that. And so I'm really excited. So I really, really encourage you to go into your stash, see what you have, get all your Christmas or your scrapbook paper out that you want, cut it down to size, get all your paper bags that you've been hoarding and little envelopes and things. This is the place to use them in a junk journal. So the paper that I used for this, I know a lot of you are going to ask me, um, a majority of the paper that I used is from October afternoon and it's just various collections that I've had in my stash forever. They're all retired collections. They're very hard to find online. You might be able to check eBay or Etsy, but definitely there's nothing in like any of the store online stores that I have found because I'm obsessed with October Afternoon. It's my favorite, one of my favorite paper companies. They haven't really put anything out in several years, but I've been hoarding all of my Christmas stuff and it's all like a retro kitschy vintage and what better time to use it than with little golden books. So I pretty much just wiped out my stash of October Afternoon. That's where most of these um, are from as well. I had 12 by 12 paper. I had um, the, these little journal packs with the journal cards in them. And so the collections I used were Under the Tree, Silent Night, and Holiday Style. Those were the three collections I used from October Afternoon. And then I also used A Very Merry Christmas by Echo Park slash Cartabella. And that's this collection here where you see these really vintage retro kind of posters. Um, some of the paper that I used and the cut aparts I used were from that collection and that is available and I'll link it down below for you so you can go check it out. I want to thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying the craft fair series. If you've missed any of the videos, it, the playlist will be linked at the end of this video. If you haven't already, please go follow me over on Instagram because over there I give you sneak peeks of all the projects coming up. I'll, I'll let you know when a video is going to be live and 
all of the you know good stuff is happening over on Instagram. So let me link that below for you so you can go and check me out over there. Here's my handle name. And so also, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe here. Give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more craft fair ideas. And there is a little bell that you can push down there to give you um, notifications that I've posted a video. So if you feel like, you know, getting notifications, go ahead and click the bell. Thank you so much. Your support means so much to me. And I am so thankful for each and every one of you. I will be back very soon with another craft fair idea, and I'm very excited for the ones coming up. Thank you again for your support. I hope you enjoyed this video, and have a good one. Bye!